ஸ்ரீபகவோ அரோசோ அரோசோ ஆரோசோடிய Samocha me, um, how do you say the writing, uh, combining all. So that me, in this chapter, uh, importing categories uh, will be mentioned together. So actually this chapter is very important. Mostly, uh, all these uh, categories we are taking from sota pitaka sota pitaka for that reason uh, one of the famous uh, abidama scholar in myanmar lady siaro and he said that <coughs> if we uh, if we learn abidama sankaha so this comprehensive manual of abidama so you know to tipitaka not only apidama but also sota pitaka so the reason is uh, an earlier chapters from 1 to 6 uh, it cover four ultimate realities cheta chedasika rupa and nibbana but now it is a pratyeka pratyeka aspect So after you learn uh, four ultimate realities, now to practice. <laughs> so I think uh, this chapter is very important. So practice is packed. So I think uh, uh, this chapter and another following two chapters talk about uh, mainly from Sota Pitaka. <coughs> so I think uh, by learning uh bitta mata sangaha uh this one small one this book very small book in bali so by learning this small book then you can expand in two two bitta uh two nik uh two uh bitta <coughs> but of course you need to know uh, a lot of explanations so today uh we will learn compendia of categories So in this uh in the introduction uh the author uh Bitamara Sankaha uh he he said that uh, we have learned 72 atma realities 72 atma realities so actually uh what we know is only four atma realities so in this chapter the author said that uh 72 atma reality were already mentioned <coughs> so what are the seven seven in two number one consciousness or chaita consciousness is regarded as one ultimate reality so the reason is uh, uh, so even though we have 89 chaitas or 121 chaitas so their interest in nature is only one so cognizing of an object so as a consciousness only one characteristics or interest in nature so that is a uh, cognizing the object the object for that reason uh, we count consciousness or cheta as a one ultimate realities so we have a 52 mental factors 52 cheta seekers so they have they are counted each of these 
we are counted as the one atomic realities. As the FASA <coughs> contact as the atomic reality because it, it has one intrinsic nature. Contact with the object. Uh, feeling very now and feeling also have uh, uh, is um, uh, intrinsic natures experience experience the uh, experience to experience the object for that reason all these 52 mental factors are counted as the 52 atomic realities so now together 53 So among 28 material phenomena, the 80 concretely produced matters in Pali, Nipana, Rupa, concretely produced matter. They are concrete. They are actually they are the object of insight meditations. We can practice insight meditations by using these material phenomena. They are concrete. So among 28 material phenomena. So these 80 greatly produced matters are called, uh, are counted as a, uh, each of them, we are counted as a one atomic realities. For that reason, among 28 matters, so we have a 80 atomic realities. So they have their own interest in natures. Regarding with the Patawi, the earth has the intrinsic nature of solidity, hard and soft. Regarding with the fire, or uh, techo, or uh, say, you know, temperature, its characteristic is temperature or cold and heat. So they have these, each of these 80 concretely produced matters. So they have their own characteristics. For that reason, so in in the matters we have eighty uh, material and uh, atomic realities. Nepana, actually here. So we have the rest of the ten. The rest of the tens are not not real rupa, not real material phenomena. So they are included in the material phenomena. The reason is they are. They appear, they arise as a result of real rupa. So they cannot be practiced as the object of meditation. They are not real rupa. So for that reason, the rest of the uh, ten matters, we call it nung. They are just panyati. So uh, it is just a concept in our mind. So they, they, they get those names just like a, uh, uh, just like a impermanent, you know, protection, decay. So these are not real rupas. So they For that reason, Amen 28, only 80s are regarded as atomic realities. Next one is the Nibbana. Nibbana is only counted as the one because regarding with intrinsic nature, only one nature. <coughs> so altogether, 72 atomic realities. So normally, uh, we norm we learn in the the first chapter we have eight atomic realities. Cheta Cheta is one atomic realities. Have each of these sixty two have their own characteristics or their own intrinsic natures. The power. For that reason, we count fifty two. Man twenty eight matters only. 80 matters are real matter. So they have, they are concrete, so they are visible. <coughs> and Nibbana, 
is it one atomic reality so altogether 72 atomic realities so the author said that uh, we already have learned uh, so these 72 atomic realities so now he said that uh, we will study categories so we have a four four categories in this chapter number one the companion of the unwholesome akusala sangaha Number one, we will study unwholesome category. So all the things will be unwholesome. Number two, mix categories. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Number three, the convenient or requisites of enlightenment. So this is a very important uh, session. So we have a uh, seven, uh, 70, uh, 37 requisites of uh, enlightenment. If we want to attain enlightenment, so we need to know these uh, 37. Then number four, the compendium of the whole. So compendium of the whole me, uh, actually very important, uh, how do you say, the category will be discussed in this session, just like a four noble truths, and uh, just like a five aggregate, and two, last one the competing of the whole it's very important one so I think uh, after learning this chapter thoroughly I think uh, you will know what is all about teachings of the Buddha in the Sota Bhidika but of course in this chapter later you will find that uh, some of the factors are added according to a Bhidhamma okay So now, Kumbiriyam or the Ahosan, Akusala. So in this session, we will learn number one, Tains, Asawa. What are the Asawa? Number two, Flats, Oka. Number five, number five Clinging. Number six, Hindrances. Number seven, Leading dispositions number eight factors sanyochana number nine defilements gilesa so actually you have already learned all these one but now is a good chance to learn all these one together in one place so these will be covered in this session all together nine number one tains or Aswa. <clears throat> According to commentary of the first Abhidhamma book, Atasalini, sometimes we call it six sin species. So that is the meaning of Aswa. Things that flow out from six doors or six in space. So what are the six doors? Eye, ear, nose, tongue, the body and the mind. These are the six doors. Mind. Actually it is just a metaphor. So when we see something, sometimes anger arises, flow up. Sometimes greed flow up. Actually, it's just metaphor. Not uh, anger or greed, it's not flowing out from the eye, just metaphor. Sometimes we see with our eye, you know, defilements or taints will flow up. That is the meaning. Things that flow out from six doors. Sometimes you hear something, sometimes hatred, sometimes jealousy, sometimes greed, craving, all these will come up. That is the meaning of that 
Then Gumantri mentioned two aspects. With the respect to existence, as you all know that we have a 31 planes of existence. So with the respect to existence, it flows right up to the topmost plane of existence. So what is the topmost plane of existence? Perception. So actually the fourth jhana planes of the immaterial planes. So those also are not only arise in the human realms, it also arises in the immaterial, even in immaterial realms. Very powerful, right? Not only in the sensory realms, it go up to the, it can arise uh, up to the topmost plane of existence. So even the Brahma, the taints can arise in their mind. So it's a very powerful uh, defilement. Not only human beings, devas, the Brahma as well. So with the respect to existence, it flows right up to the tomo plane of existence. The next one, with the respect to mind process, actually uh, the commentary mentioned the word dhamma. Dhamma me actually I just use a normal one, mind process. With the respect to phenomena, it flows right up to the change of lineage, Kutarabu. Actually, we have learned uh, Kutarabu. So that, that me before, before change of lineage. So after that, my grandfather. So these things, these defilements, uh, flows right up to the, how do you say, the change of lineage, up to that state of mind. Then after that, there's no taints. At that moment, there's no taints. So the taints or aswa will flow uh, right up to the change of lineage. You understand this one? The last one? Okay, it will go up to the change of one of the sensory consciousness. So the taints can arise even at that moment. But after change of lineage, Magafala will arise. So when we have Magafala, there's no chance for t meaning of Asawa. That means things that flow out from the six stars. From the eye, you know, the taints may arise. Ear, nose, tongue, the body, the mind. Ear may arise. Uh, well, uh, taints will arise. A second definition, it also means that things that are similar to intoxicants, like liquors, which have which have been fermented for a long time. Which have been fermented for a long time, just like intoxicants. So they have been fermented for a long time. You keep, suppose you drink liquor using uh, the cup, right? Sorry, using the body. Then you keep the liquor in the body, then you ferment it then you drink it. Even though you finish, the smell will stay there. Just like that, even though you become non retainer even though you there. The reason is, it has been fermented for a long time. It has been latent in our mind for a long time. For that reason, it is just like intoxicants, like liquors, so uh, it will last for a long time. You know, in our, deep in our mind, it has been fermented for many, many, many years. 
that is second meaning for those who want to know in details then you can read the exposita page number 63 the exposita is uh, English translation of Atasalini the first Abhidhamma book so this is a very important book for those who want to learn Abhidhamma question no question okay so we have a four things uh, so uh, <coughs> number one the things of sensory desire some will translate sensual desire kama so uh, sensual pleasures you crave for it so actually uh, we desire for senses we want to see we want to hear we want to eat we want to touch we want to think all, the, all these are sensory desire especially with your senses with your senses desire to see that is a sensory desire A different level of sensory desires. So, if you desire unwholesome things, that's not good. But sometimes you have a uh, desire to enjoy your your properties, your uh, you know desire for sensory desire. Uh, sensory. Uh, uh, s s it is also sensory desire. But it's not. It will not deter to go to a good destination. But when you look at from sensory desire, you cannot attain jhana. Maka am far far away. <laughs> so it is a greed to sens sensual pleasures. Number two, the taints of existence. So, so we went to the things of existence. It is also greed, loba, to existences. We have a thirty-one planes of existence. So, we want to be born in one of the uh, one of the existences. Normally, human being they don't like. Extension of existence. We don't like it because we have craving, right? Greed to our existence. That's very important. That's very important. Existence. So as a new retainer, they don't have a number one. They don't have sensory desire. But they still have number two. The things of existence. For that reason, um, when the Buddha uh, sent missionaries for the first time, as you all know that the Buddha, when the Buddha uh, had a sixty disciples, he told his disciples, he said that he had been cut off all the bombs uh, regarding with the Deva Loka. Buddha said that he had already er eradicated uh, the taints of existence. No desire to be born in human realm, in the Deva realm, and the Brahma realm. They have becomes Arahant. All the disciples at the time are Arahant. So what the Buddha taught is very beneficial for them and now there's no more rebirth for them the Buddha said for the sake of many people go forth uh, to suppress his teachings so that is in, in his the, uh, the first missionary statement the Buddha said that 
he and all the disciples already is it are uh, eradicated or state of existence the number 3 the things of ignorance which are so actually this is the most difficult one this one also only someone be can ever hand can eradicate ignorance so here ignorant me nothing but uh, delusion moha that we have learned and the first one and two are loba and the last one is delusion moha so here awaja me not knowing for noble truth not knowing for noble truth not really easy to know for noble truth even the first one suffering we do not know suffering for that reason <laughs> has happiness for the reason in makandiya sauda majmani kaya the buddha said that uh, uh one of the uh, one of the brahmin called makandi he said that he have he has is sensual pleasure sensual pleasure is nibbana he can enjoy life he have a lot of luxuries a good house and the buddha said that um, in my sasana the buddha said that since your pleasures are just like a disease <laughs> the buddha gave a very a very good simile uh someone has a uh, a very itchy disease eh? itchy disease scratch scratch a disease and if he if it look good right but after stretching that disease painful very painful the buddha said that since your pleasures are like this the moment you are are uh, scratching that uh that disease it look good but after that no good for those who are uh, to have such one just like that the buddha said that for those who attain jhana doesn't want sensory desires sensual pleasures so so what i what, what i want to say is normally even we do not see suffering as a suffering the first the first for no better right second one more difficult the original suffering so ignorant is uh, not knowing for no better truth so one of the things here is uh, uh the other way take on uh, all the categories so we have to learn not based on the atomic realities atomic realities so according to abhidharma ignorance is uh, ignorance is taken as a moha right so the first two are loba minda factor the number four the tens of wrong views data sawa in the sabda pitaka and most of the places in abhidhamma pitaka even the abhidhamma pitaka only the fat trees are mentioned as a asawa the fat tree that means since the readers only three the trees are mentioned as the asawa the tens of round view is not mentioned as the asawa not only sort of pitakas but also some of the places in abhidhamma pitaka but uh, and the commentaries at that were more asawa that is the tens of wrong views so it became four tens normally we have only three tens the fat three so according to patana and commentaries 
So now that team, now that Aswa is at or together I became four. Palikane usually means becoming or an arahan with the attainment of distraction of how is it? the knowledge of distraction or taints. The knowledge of distraction or taints. That is called aswakya jnana. We attain aswakya jnana, the knowledge of distraction or taints. Only for those who already destroy all the taints become arahant. Nun retana, nun retana, they already, already so the tensor of wrong view. But they still have uh, the tensor of existence and the tensor of ignorance. Only Arahan can remove all the taints. For that reason, uh, for those who become Arahan, Bali can usually use that. Uh, he attained the knowledge of distressing or taints. Aswakyanyana. So when you read the soda, many sodas uh, is mentioned in such a way. And sodas in especially Samanyafala soda. And many soda in Majma Nikaya. So and they just mention only how to uh, Someone became the knowledge of uh, distraction or things. It's called Arahan. So that always mentions three kinds of things. So that means the things of sensory desire, the things of existence, and the things of ignorance. I see, Asawa. But uh, Abhidharma, at another one. Uh, the things of wrong view. So together, four. Okay, question? Okay. Oops. Um, um, okay, I'm basically just trying to keep up. <laughs> so I hope I got it correctly. Um, what is the difference between taint of ignorance and taint of wrong view, which has been added by um, Abhidhamma? Okay. Yeah. You mean the meaning of the taints of ignorance? And the, and the, the difference, really. Actually, the difference. Yeah, you have a difference, yes. Yes, between mm -hmm. um, taint of ignorance and taint of wrong view. Yeah, they have a difference. Normally, because of ignorance, wrong view arises. So actually, uh, in uh, Dipana originations, we learn that uh, based on uh, Dipana on ignorance, Sankara arises. Um, the first soda of uh, Maka Sanyoda, Sounda Nikaya, chapter 45. So the first soda said that. Uh, the ignorant is full runner. The after ignorance, if we have ignorance, the wrong view spring up. Right? So that means uh, uh, because of ignorance, not knowing, then wrong view arises. But if we know four noble truths, that is called wisdom. Wisdom. That is called wager. If we know four noble truths, then right view spring up. That means ignorance or wisdom is full runner. They confess, then after that, right view and wrong view will come up. You got it? So here, because of ignorance, not knowing, then we have a wrong view. I wonder why Abhidhamma included number four, wrong view. Yeah. Um, there must be some pressing, a very good reason 
for Abhidhamma to do that because it is so yeah, detailed. Yeah, yeah. So what is it that Abhidhamma wants to say? Because generally we do know that because of ignorance, wrong view springs up. So what is that? That, that main message, you know, the very core key message that Abhidhamma is trying to tell us? Normally the nature of Abhidhamma trying to trying to bring detailed explanations. Normally in the Sota Pitaka we have only three. So one of the uh, one of the sec commentary, one of the sec commentary, sec commentary me, uh, the text that explain commentaries. Uh, the sec one of the sec commentary said that also I also find that why four right normally, in all the sotas uh, mention only three why Abhidhamma added three. So I think uh, it is for. Actually, as far as I and uh, as far as I uh, want to say, other uh, other Abhidhamma texts, so that me maybe I overlook. So the reason I think uh, Patana trying to explain, I want to say, the most comprehensive explanations. Wrong view of God, we can also say that that is it, the taints. We have a wrong view based on ignorance. Because of that taints, because of that defilement, wrong view, our action, our intention, our speech went wrong, go wrong. So the trying to elaborate. Four noble truths, especially uh, the first and uh, sorry, second and third. So for that reason, uh, Patana trying to elaborate So I think that is uh, <laughs> the reason I can find out. But uh, one of the second commentaries said that um, if someone say wrong view, that is Pamada Leka. Pamada Leka me uh, how do you say writing wrongly. So Pamada Leka me how do you say the uh, uh, mistyping mistyping somebody added uh, as a so I think uh as we can find only three type of tains in the sodas, I think uh, just take it as a three uh, tains. It's more than enough. So normally, um, uh, that the same set commentary said that uh, uh, wrong view, uh, wrong view is added in the the tains of ignorance. Sorry, the tains of existence, the tains of existence. So the reason is. Um, the commentary follow a bit of a method. So the tense of existence is taking loba, right? The wrong view also another aspect of greed. So they have the same uh, the same root, uh, the root of loba. For that reason, uh, that sacramentary said that uh, uh, the wrong view, we we can forget about it because it is just a part of uh, the taints of existence and uh, the root of. Okay. Uh, because taints are very important. Yes. Yeah, because it is if you want to be. Um, if you want to be free yeah. from suffering, you must know what are the taints when they arise in your minds. Yes. So you know how to manage them accordingly. Yes, yes. So the taint of existence, um, to me, it's, um, I don't understand that because it's very conceptual. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will explain further. Can I give an example? Like, you know, my mother, when she's angry, she will say, I, uh, I don't want to 
come back again. I don't want to be reborn. <laughs> so she doesn't want to have existence. But obviously, she still has taints of existence, right? Yeah. Yeah, because she gets angry. She says, I, I don't want to be reborn again, all this suffering and all that, you know? But obviously, she still has taints of existence. Even I though see. You just say, yeah. Yes. So what, ex so what really does taint of existence mean? Okay, okay, I will, I will explain. I will explain. I will, I will explain based on the sotas explanation based on the Abhidharma. According to Abhidharma, so uh, the, the tense of existence is another aspect of loba. Because we have a loba to existences. For that reason, uh, it's called asawa tense. Uh, it's quite clear, but as, uh, just like your mother, uh, she, does, she doesn't want to live. Actually, is a even for us, sometimes, right? We don't want to live. We don't. Well, we don't want to live uh, in this life. Want to die? <laughs> it look like you don't have uh, the things of existence. But according to the Sota, uh, uh, we have a three type of craving, right? Uh, Kamatana, craving for sensual pleasure, sensory. Pleasures. Number two, craving for existence. Sometimes craving for non existence. Actually, your mother go to that label, that category. Non existence, right? It's another name for dosa or hatred. So, actually, for that reason, I always say that uh, according to Abhidharma, uh, second noble truth. Toka Samuriya is Loba. Actually, according to the Sotas, not only Loba, but also Dosa as well. But uh, ignorance or Moha manipulate, you know, trying to control behind. We can see that Loba, Dosa, Moha are the original craving, sorry, the original suffering. But here I will come back to the tense of existence. So according to Abhidhamma, but here Abhidhamma, I will, I will say that according to commentary explanations, just like with Sori Maga, they were explaining the things of existence as a, another aspect of Loba, greed. But uh, according to the Sodas, according to the first Salman of the Buddha, it can be Loba and Dosa, right? Sometime, uh, we want to live as a as a human being. Sometimes you may want you, you may want uh, you hate it. You want to die. There's another aspect of craving. I want to say that is it two type, loba as well as dosa. So that is a two aspect according to the sutras. So I think we have to explain in such a way. But another one is. Um, we saw in America mentioned that the things of existence is another name for how do you say the uh, craving for rupa and arupa jhana. Sometimes when you attain uh, five material jhana or immaterial jhana, you crave for it. So then that is a, the things of existence. That is another explanation. So I think uh, so. I think the explanation is very, how to say, sometimes very confusing. Uh, I think just take it as a, uh, we have a craving regarding with the existence. Sometimes we want to live, sometimes you don't, you hate it. Both hatred and greed, not good. Just live in the present moment. Actually, taint of existence to me, mm. you know, from a simple, everyday point of view, is that you want something to exist. Yeah, and you're, you're so right. This is another explanation. Yeah. Yes, from the everyday point of view, like, you know, like when I see something, wow, so beautiful, so luxurious, I want it, so I buy it. So this beautiful, expensive bag is existence. So I want that kind of existence. Yeah, you're so, so right. Yeah. But... Uh, Sometimes, according to context, according to context, but uh, according to Dibana originations, 
uh, the HSME actually these are existences. But as you, I agree that uh, sometimes we want existence. Sometimes uh, I normally explain that in your office, so you're working, you're working with another many colleague colleges. When naughty guy is walking beside you, you don't want his existence. <laughs> That's hatred. No? That's hatred. You don't want the existence of that kind. But sometimes, someone you like very much. So one day you learn that she have to move another place. Then you feel very sad. You don't want her to go, right? To go another place. That is, you want existence of that, that woman or that girl. So that is also existence. So existence, non-existence. You want non-existence of that kind. You want existence of that girl, the boy, like this. So that is also is a type of craving. Normally, normally when we have such type of craving, non-existence and existence, both are the original suffering. People will exist beside you, in your, in, in your family, in your job, in your temple. <laughs> Just observe they exist, right? No more hatred. No more greed. So that is, uh, I think we need a lot of wisdom. The wisdom is opposite of ignorance. If we have ignorance, then that will lead to, you know, hatred and delusion, uh, hatred or greed. Of course, according to Abhidhamma, the taints of existence is a lob. For those who are going to take YMB ASEN, you have to take note this one. But if you don't want to take YMB ASEN, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so you can understand that this is a both loba and dosa. It can be, right? It can be. Okay. Question? So, Bhante, sorry. So the solution is really just to observe whether it is existence that arises in your mind or non-existence. Yeah. Just be at peace with it. Whether it's somebody you don't like, or whether it's something you like, or whether it's news that you hear, bad news, whatever. Yeah, you're right, you're people. right. So that is the solution. For that reason, the Buddha said in Mahabrini Panasoda, there's only one way to overcome suffering. That is mindfulness. Mindfulness supported by other, the noble full path. Right? The mindfulness, actually, I think that the Buddha wanted to say the Noble Eightfold Path. So actually the leading uh, one in Master Deepa Ranasoda is the mindfulness. So that mindfulness has to be supported by other factors, just like concentration and sila, right view, right intention, etc. Okay. So only mindfulness is the cure for us. If you are mindful, pleasant things and pleasant things, but if you are, as long as you are mindful, uh, another thing is actually in, in my uh, last Thursday, I said that mindfulness and sambhajana, sati and sambhajana, sati me mindfulness. You have to be very mindful at that moment. Then another one is Sambhajana, knowing thoroughly, knowing, comprehending thoroughly. You have to know it, that's all. You have to know a bad guy as a bad guy, a good guy as a good guy, that's all. There's no <laughs> hatred or, or, there's no hatred or greed, loba, right? So that is the, the cure is mindfulness, sati and Sambhajana. Sati me mindfulness, samjana me wisdom. Okay? And the soul down.
Next, next one is flaps or gap. The same defilements that are called tails are called flat. The same category, the same uh, the same number, the same four tails are called four flats because they sweep billions away into the oceans of existence. In other words, we can call it sansar because they are hard to cross. Normally, we want to bo we want to be born in human realm, heavenly realm, and Brahma realm. And as you said that, uh, if Stumpy Bear doesn't want existence, there's also another existence, non-existent, right? Non-existence because of hatred. So they are hard to cross. For that reason, they are called flat. So. These four flat, flats will sweep away all the beings in sansara, going around sansara because of these four flat. But not like four tames. We have a, uh, in one of the soda in Sounda Nikaya mentioned four kinds of flats, including round view. <coughs> So actually, we have four kinds of flat. Number one, the flat of sensory desire, the same thing. We have sensory desire. Because of that, we are going around sansar. We cannot get away with this. Number four, number two, the flat of, the flat of existence. Bawa Oga. Same as the tense of existence. Number three, the flat of ignorance. Same as the, same, uh, the tense of ignorance. And the flat or round view. <coughs> Actually, we don't need to learn, right? If you know four tails, the same. Just like that, we have a four type of bombs, yoga. Four bombs are also the same with the four tails, they are the same. <coughs> they are called bombs, yoga because they yoke beings to suffering and do not allow them to escape just like the oxen so when they are tied in the yoke they cannot run away just like that so when we are yoked with the four bombs we cannot run away from sansara for that reason it is called bombs Actually, they are the same, the same category, the same uh, intrinsic natures, but uh, the Borat Deleva are using different names because of uh, different inclinations or dis different disposition of beings. Some people, after listening to uh, the Wa Asawa, they were, ha they were attaining enlightenment. And sometimes the Borat need to use the Wa Oga, the flat. So taking that simile, Sambi Bear will understand, you know, his teaching very quickly. So uh, according to inclination of beings or according to disposition of beings, so the Buddha used different terms. The same category of the teachings and the same uh, intrinsic nature of teachings, but based on individual you know, uh, dispositions. So the Buddha have to use different terms. But here, you might wonder why yoga. <laughs> Actually, the same origin, you know, we're using yoga, right? Yoga practice. Yoga practice. In Myanmar, when somebody uh, uh, go to retreat for seven days, for ten days, they are called yogi. Yogi is the person who is yoke in the meditation center. <laughs> you cannot go out. <laughs> That's another, actually another name. But actually, yogi actually means 
the one who is engaged in meditation. That's called yogi. Yogi is very beautiful name. Whether you are a uh, man or women, we call it yogi. Yogi means the person who engage, fully engage in meditation. Beautiful name. Maybe we can call it he is yoke in the meditation center. Cannot run away. <laughs> Very beautiful, yeah. Is it here yoga me uh, actually yoga is a uh, yoke, right? If you are tied in the yoke, just like oxen, you cannot run away. Just like that. So we have four yokes or four palms. Uh, um, if you have these four palms, you cannot run away from sansara. Next one is called knots, ganda. Actually, this one also very beautiful. You know, the Buddha used different terms. The same thing. But this one is different. So they are called knots, ganda, because the time beings in sansara, by way of path and death. So if you have four knots, so you will be tied in sansara. If you do an and deed, you will be tied to hell. <laughs> if you do host and deed, heavenly realms or human realms, if you attain jhana, brahma realm, so as long as you stay at the three, four knots, you'll be tied in sansara. Only if you can remove all these knots, then you will free from sansara. So they are also called bodily knots. Bodily knots. But here, bodily here means not actual body, is it both mental body as well as physical body. Mental body, physical body. So they are called bodily not because they tie the mental and physical body of beings in sansara. The same thing. Sometimes called just kanda, sometimes called kaya kanda. So we have a four kinds of bodily knots. Number one, the bodily knot of covetousness, awaja kaya kanda. Aveja Kagana, Kovatasna Abeja. It is craving or greed which pulls beings toward the desirable objects. Normally, if uh, we see and we hear desirable objects, our mind is pulled, you know, uh, pulled to that object. We cannot run away. So that is called knots. You are tied to that object. You see something, then you, you are, your mind tied to that object. You hear something, your mind tied to, tied to that object. Is it the opposite of letting go? Only you can practice letting go, then you will have happiness. If your mind is tied to many objects, so that will be the cause of suffering. Need to practice letting go. The moment you are dying, if, you, if your mind is tied to your body, then that's a great suffering. You have, you have to go, right? You have to leave your body. If you tie your mind to your body, then that, that is a, you know, the source of suffering. For that reason, letting go is very important. I will, I, will, I will say the same thing. Bhikkhuni Kema, right? She practices letting go. She doesn't care about her body. She just observes what is happening. So she said that if we practice letting go, or another word, renunciation, if we do not tie uh, our mind with our, uh, our body, with our mind, Actually, is it near near death? Is pleasant. Is pleasant. It's not suffering at all because of letting go. 
no attachment, no time to the body. I think that is very important. You see a white hair in your on your head. <laughs> if you practice letting go, no suffering at all, right? <laughs> Some people cannot take it, right? Cannot take it. They, you know, they take, they even uh, pull out. <laughs> when I was young, I had to pull out, you know, a white hair from my father. <laughs> my father told me to pull out white hair. You know? The reason is he couldn't take it. His mind is tied to his hair, you know? So and that is it, the source of suffering. When you, especially when you grow older, then if you cannot accept it, that is very important, no? The source of suffering. The body will decay, we have to accept it. That's letting go, right? Letting go. If you tie your body, if you tie your body with your mind, you see, the, the source of suffering. Another one is the body not of Iwi. Pyabara Kayakanda. So it is hatred, dosa, which is manifested as aversion to our undesirable objects. Normally we don't like undesirable objects. We don't like hot weather. We don't like bad people. We don't like a very bad environment. We don't like bad food, etc. Right? If we encounter with undesirable objects, that doesn't mean you have to take it. So don't uh, we don't have to have a hatred or aversion toward those objects. Normally, so when we see or when we hear, when we touch undesirable objects, naturally aversion arises. We don't like it. Actually, we don't like it. That is, the body not away even slighted irritations in your mind. Even slighted uh, irritation in your mind. That is called Iwe. <coughs> that is another <coughs> The next one, uh, the body not of adherence to the rites and rituals. <coughs> the body not of adherence to the rites and rituals. So uh, I think uh, rites and rituals sometimes a little bit confusing, but I find a very good explanation taught by a very famous Seattle in Myanmar, Masi Seattle. You know Masi Seattle? Then I will find a very good explanation. Normally we, um, we write in such a way uh, this is a big body uh, explanation. It is the belief that the performance of rites and rituals constitute the means to liberation, or liberation of suffering, or liberation of problem. Sometimes we have a problem, we perform a lot of rites and rituals. Then you go to God of Mercy, like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> These are considered as the rites and rituals. So, I always say that uh, there are many rites and rituals in Chonda Sota. We have uh, we can learn a lot. So when we get up, you touch the ground. <laughs> that is that will be the purity of the mind, right? If you just touch the ground, that will be it will purify your mind. Then. In the morning, you go to the river and dive into the river. In the afternoon, in the evening, you dive into the river. That way purify you are all evil sins. So these are called rites and rituals. Actually, we have a lot. We have a lot. For that reason, I like the explanation of Masi Searo. He said that the noble eightfold path is stated as the only way for purification of beings and to overcome suffering, both mentally and physically. So that is said that this bodily knot 
or adherence to rights and rituals is the belief outside of the noble eightfold path. Other than, instead of practicing the noble eightfold path, then you perform rites and rituals. So that is called uh, the Bali Noro adherence to rites and rituals, Silabra Pramasa. I think that is very important. Let's say, Buddhist, the noble eightfold path is fundamental to practice for our practice. Wherever problem you have, just compare to the noble eightfold path. Look at what is wrong with you in the noble eightfold path. Sometimes because of wrong view, then you have a lot of problem. Based on wrong view, wrong action, wrong speech, wrong livelihood, follow. We, we just have to come back to the noble evil path. But don't look at rights and rituals. So I always say that even if we do not have right understanding, it will lead to rights and rituals. Because just blessing with the water will not uh, purify your evil actions. Will not purify your problem. But I always say that um, man, to those rights and rituals. But of course, you have a problem, you come to temple and you receive blessing from the bandit you have a release. That's a good aspect, right? Because of because you are coming to the right right place, a good place. Your mind you will have a peace of mind. So we have to understand in such a way. Just blessing water will not make much difference. The only loving kindness, compassion or the bandits and you are coming to the quiet place and peaceful place, then you are devotion to the Bodhisattva that will make you different. So here what I want to say is even you know the blessing with the water, if we do not have a right understanding, it will lead to uh, rising rituals. But here, whatever problem you have, compared to the noble full path. So look at, observe what is wrong with you. What is, what, what is wrong with your with the right view? What is wrong with your intention? What is wrong with your bodily and verbal actions? Livelihood, etc. Then right effect, concentrations, and mindfulness. Look at, come back. Whatever problem you have, just come back the noble full path. And you observe, you and uh, you how to evaluate based on the noble eightfold path. So that will be a good path. For that reason, I like uh, Mazi Sierra said that he said that um, outside of the noble eightfold path, if you think that all these practices and rites and rituals, including ceremonies, these are called. Not only rites and rituals, including ceremonies, you know, if we do not have a proper understanding. That is called rites and rituals. <laughs> what I mean is that. Champion, champion is very beautiful practice, I must say that. But if we Champion, can, right? Champion, Champion. Yeah, you remember your ancestors. But then if we continue to do that, you will never become a Sotapana because then we have attachment to rights and wishes. Uh, in such a way, you know, uh, if I were uh, following that practice, I would think in such a way. It's a very beautiful practice. It is the, uh, the day that you remember your ancestors then you still remember your ancestors. Then you go there and clear the uh, grave, right? Tombs. 
then you offer food and flower, etc. This is a, a type of uh, respect and gratitude to show your parents, to show your ancestors. You see, very beautiful, right? But don't feel anything if you cannot do that. So I think that uh, nowadays, uh, some bodies in Watambe, they, after they die, after cremation, they do yeah. After doing sea burials, no more duties, right? They don't, they don't need to go to the tombs or, or crematorium. It will save a lot of time and money, but it's not really easy to have such credit, you know, attitude. It needs a lot of letting go, a lot of renunciation. Normally, we crave for our rights and rituals, our, our, our culture, custom. If we do not understand custom and culture, that will lead to these wrong views. The not is very white. For that reason, I like explanation of uh, Mahasi Searo. Other than the noble for path, if you practice a certain, if you follow a certain practice, that is nothing to do with the noble for path. It is called adherence to rites and rituals. Actually, we have a different translation of the word. Even the commentaries, the traditional tradition interpretations, a very, very, I want to say, narrow interpretation of Mazi Siaro. As a Buddhist, something is nothing to do with the Nobel for path. That's called uh, Silabra Pramasa. But of course, you go and pray for your uh, ancestors, but you have a compassion and gratitude in your mind. That's also a part of the noble full path. It depends on our attitude, I think, right? Some people feel guilty, so when they cannot go, they're trying to go. That's also not good. Attachment, all right? Poorly not of adherence to the rites and rituals. It depends on our attitude, I think, right? Depends on our attitude. If you go there, I say to pay gratitude and to pay respect to your ancestors, that's beautiful, beautiful practice. <coughs> so I um, very often read. Uh, about the uh, for the news um, as a Chinese in China, wherever they are, however they are busy, they go back home. The chain, uh, New Year Day, right? New Year Days for family reunion. It's very beautiful, right? Very beautiful. And then uh, champion also, and then a beautiful brightness. Then let's see. Uh, And we, <coughs> we put uh, flowers on the tomb. Some people say that we have a, a lot of attachment to our mother. It's not so. It's not so. We respect and we remember gratitude to our mother. Also, this one also uh, it depends on our attitude, right? Depends on our at attitude. Of course, if we can let go, uh, if we do not have a tomb, that's also good. But we have a tomb to remember gratitude and to pay respect to the mother. That's why I think this one also good. So it depends on our attitude, right? Attitude is nothing but intention, right? Second, second, uh, second, a full part. Based on right view, we have 
a right attitude. If we have a right attitude, our actions, our speech, everything will be right. Easy, the no way for path, right? The no way for path. Okay, so I think uh, this one is very important to understand. Uh, whatever problem you have, compared to the new way for. with the new way for path. If you find it, if you find it, something wrong, trying to change it, trying to amend it, right? Okay, the next one is the body not or dogmatic belief that this alone is the truth. It makes a little bit confused, you know? So the body not or dogmatic belief that this alone is the truth. In the uh, Mahasati Patana Soda, the Buddha said that this is the only way, this is the only path to overcome suffering for the purification of beings. This is the only way. <laughs> actually, it's not. So actually, I will explain. Explain this one. Bhagavadi said that it is firm conviction that someone's own view is the only truth, that all other views are false. That is the body you know, of dogmatic belief, especially the dogmatic belief. So the last two probably not are both aspects of Chedesika wrong view. The seemly or the wrecked. <coughs> Majimanikaya, Sura number 22. So the Buddha said that, uh, I have shown you how the Dhamma is similar to erect. Normally we have Tipitaka. If you grab it, this is my book, this is my belief, right? Huh? If you grab it, grasping is a upadana. Grasping is a loba. This is my religion. <laughs> this is my temple, <laughs> like this. If you grab it, the Dharma should be regarded as a raft. We use it as a purpose of crossing over the stream, river. In that so that the Buddha said that uh, this shore is very dangerous, a lot of dangerous species. If you can cross over the other shore, you are safe. For that reason, you collect a lot of bamboo, uh, a lot of, a lot of touches, and you make it raft. Then you using that raft, then you cross over the other shores. But you think that because of, because of this raft, I am safe. So this raft is very helpful, it's very beneficial for me. Then you take that raft and put it on your shoulder. Bring, uh, you bring, uh, you go wherever, you bring, you bring it wherever, wherever you go. You think that that raft is very beneficial for you, very helpful for you. It saved your life because of that you bring wherever you go. Actually, the main purpose of raft is just to cross over the other shore. But now it's complete, right? You have to let behind. Just like that, the Buddha said, To be similar to a raft, you should abandon even to the teachings, even to the Dharma, the Buddha, the Dharma or teachings. How much more so things 
contrary to the teachings even teachings of the buddha you don't have to grab it even buddhism as a religion you don't have to grab it this is my religion don't talk ill of my my religion <laughs> like this you know for the reason you know um in the uh Pramajala Soda, the first Soda Adhigani Kaya, the Buddha said, and criticize and condemns. Don't be angry. If the Buddha said that if you if you are angry, you do not you do not know what they are saying is truth or fault. If someone say if someone prays. about triple gems it someone glorifying triple gems don't feel elated with the loba so if we feel elated instead of having loba and dosa trying to practice number 1 sati and sambajana <laughs> only two right sati and sambajana mindfully listen to them and know what they are talking to that's the only two sati and sambajana then if they are talking wrongly so that that would be the right way in the brahmachala soda so here what i want to say is we follow teachings of the bora we are buddhist uh we believe buddhism but we shouldn't guys especially in the social media right some criticize you have to listen you have to read their criticism carefully with the sati and sambajan without hatred without greed then if they are wrong correct them if they are right congratulate you what what you say is uh right so that is what the buddha taught but here in this soda the buddha said that even the dharma the dharma what is this uh the teaching or the dharma taught by our buddha should it have attachment or grasping if we have attachment the dharma or buddhism as a religion is someone criticize anger automatically will arise very you know the buddha said that even the dharma no grasping right how much more so things contrary to the dharma even the dharma no grasping no attachment the dharma is just to overcome suffering that is the purpose right if we grab it buddhism or bodhisattva it the dharma is not to overcome suffering is a or we call it a value added right so suffering is not the suffering is added because of the dharma right okay But I have a practical issue to get your comments. Um, you know, um, as lay devotees, there are some lay devotees who grass, 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 grass to traditions and rites and rituals. Yeah. Let me just give you an example. Um, last year at Pali Lai, during the Vasa period. I offered lunch at you know um, different periods, so I would go there, and then there was this lady because I'm so this lady um, she was um, every time I go she would say no 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 you cannot do this 
no, 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 you must put the food there. No, 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 you must use this spoon, use that spoon. Every time. So, you know, she was grasping and then she would complain to her friends, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then right. the friends would say, Nemaina, Nemaina. <laughs> but she would just keep on doing it, you know. And, um, yeah, so, and there were examples of people like this, I think in all temples, you know. So I wonder how to react, you know, to someone like that, you know, uh, without getting uh, irritated. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is, maybe it is a dogmatically only what we follow is right. Yeah. The Buddha said, even what you follow is right. No attachment. Right? No attachment. So, maybe they may, they may have a lot of grasping to their tradition, to their custom, in their tempe. If you uh, blindly follow, or how to say, uh, dogmatic, we call it hardliner, right? Yeah. In every institution, they, we have a hardliners. <laughs> so, of course, I also see them. Yes, even here but in actually, mm, <laughs> Yeah, of course, every institution, we have a hardliners. Uh, they just say, only what we follow is right. <laughs> Other than this one, no, don't do that. This is, I think, one of the part of this one, dogmatic belief. But how do you, um, on the spot, so actually, when she said it, actually the first because I went there a few times. So the first time she said it, I kept quiet. Anyway, I didn't quite get it also, la, you know. Yeah, um, I think uh, what we do is, and the only two, I think, sati and sambhajana. <laughs> I will come back to say, the best medicine, I think. <laughs> sati and sambhajana, of course, you know what they are doing, and you are very mindful. If sati and wisdom is pro pro or dominant in your mind, the anger or irritation will not arise. But of course, if you can change it, change it. If you cannot change it, just know it, you cannot do that. Right? But no dosa. No dosa. That is very important. Right? As I, as I Ali said that, we have a, uh, every institution, especially a long history, with the long histories. So they, they, they they stick to uh, dogmatic belief, you know. This one is laid down by our late Pandey. This one is laid down by Pandey Chaitra, like this. You cannot do that. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, even when they are serving food to the monks, of course, we have to follow according to seniority. But sometimes, a lot of people, right? It's very hard to follow. Then, if you stay stick to that belief, you know, that, uh, that rule according to seniority, is a part of this one, maybe, I think. Dogmatic belief. The not, they are tied to that dogmatic belief. So we have to play by ear, right? Sometimes, situation is in such a way that you cannot follow that, uh, or how to say, very old tradition. But of course, it's very beautiful. We have to respect to the seniors. But sometimes, there may be some occasion that you cannot follow. But just do it. Must be flexible. The opposite of dogmatism is flexibility. We have to be flexible, right? That doesn't mean we do not respect seniority, seniors. We have to respect them. According to, uh, we have to play by ear, right? Play by ear. Sometime. Okay. So what I want to say is, even the Dharma, which is right, no uh, seven years ago or eight years ago, I used to go and read uh, one of the blog. One of the at the time, no social media. Social media is not very popular yet. We normally use blogs. So one of the blogs talk about the bad things about Buddhism. Then uh, I normally go there and read. In this way, weak points. 
in my religion. No anger at all. Trying to train my mind not to feel angry. Many people are angry to that blogger. I think not only one blogger, maybe they do with the group. They criticize the Buddha, they criticize the man showing, doing a lot of dirty pictures like this. Mostly he trying to write a weak points or the uh, Buddhism, not teachings of the Buddha. So I'm trying By the time, I try not to be angry. <laughs> so I read it, Sati and Sambhajana. Sati and Sambhajana. Okay. So even our own religions, no grasping, no craving. So that doesn't mean we don't have to believe. We have unwavering faith, but no grasping, right? No grasping. That's very important. Another one is a clinging, upadana. Actually, we have learned many times clinging. Clinging is an intense grasp. Something grabs it. Here, something grabs it. Our mind trying to grab it. That's a clinging. We saw the Maga mentioned two level of attachment. Number one, longing for an object. Longing for an object. You want something. That is called craving. Family grasping. Family taking the object in your hand. You do not let go. That is called clinging. So that is more powerful according to commentary explanations. So craving is normal attachment. Clinging is you cannot let go. You cling to that. You grab it, right? That's clinging upadana. So we saw Maga give a very beautiful example. Then it dark into the dark night time, totally dark. Then you take something, the object, that is grasping. You couldn't let go. You're trying to take it. That's clinging. So that means in dependent originations, uh, dependent on craving, clinging arises, right? So actually the clinging is the intense grasping of the object. A different degree. Oh, okay. Uh, microphone. Uh, but this, this clinging only refers to object. Oh, no, no, the state of mind. But what about uh, you cling, for example, if two Buddhists, one male, one female, and then uh, if they don't I mean, somehow, if that clinging is I mean, you call it attachment, but it's the true love for somebody. Don't you still call it clinging? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but then, sorry, sorry. I, I, I another, uh, another one. If, if, uh, if that is the case, then uh, two Buddhists will never get married because they don't cling. <laughs> they don't, they no attachment. And then they are just nonchalant. I mean, uh, no feelings for each other. But then if they have attachment, then they... They, they become uh, not true Buddhists in a sense. How do we reconcile that, that kind of clinging? Yeah, for that reason, I'm very often said different degree of craving, right? Different degree of craving. If you crave, you, you get married, you, you have a family, but you crave for another girl, and you have an affair with that girl, that is an awesome indeed. Uh, negative consequences. That is a that craving is very bad. <clears throat> but your family, you love your wife and you love your children. 
you have a lot of craving to your wife. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> desire, right? Sensory desire. So you have desire with your senses. That, that you call it true love, right? True love. <laughs> wherever you can call it, wherever you can call it, right? Doesn't matter, it's within your family, boundary, right? Boundary. It will not, uh, it will not block the way to heavenly realm or the way to human realm. So that is acceptable. So we have a different level, right? Different level. Even clinging to or attachment to jhana is harmful for the attainment of Magha and Phala. So we have to understand in such a way, right? <coughs> but of course, as you're living, as a lay life, you can get married, you can enjoy lay life. It's acceptable. Enjoy. But if you want to attain jhana, right? You have to try and do dilu, right? You have to try to dilu. At least you have to abandon hindrances. Actually, next topic is hindrances. So that is a uh, sensory desire is one of the hindrances. You have to remove it. Otherwise, you cannot attain jhana. So, <coughs> I mean. I understand what you mean. Uh, so yeah, a, a woman saw her husband now practicing jhana, then he's losing him already because he cannot have sexual desire. But then compare that with losing the husband to a, a number three, you know, a, a, another woman. It's the same outcome. You know? What you mean is a... Okay, let's see. So her husband... Uh, a devoted Buddhist starting to meditate and uh, go into jhana yeah. and then release the sensual desire mm. and correspondingly the love for her yeah. and she's losing him. Yes. Compare that with the same woman, so her husband, going out with another girl, mm. the end result is still the same, losing the husband, isn't it? Not the same, not the same, but actually here, actually attaining jhana means only the moment you attain jhana, you will not have a sensory desires. Only the moment you, you attain jhana. The other time, you still have. So here, sometimes even the, uh, the, your spouse may be going to meditation retreat, attain jhanas. The moment she attain jhana, no desire for sensual, desire, sensual pleasures. But if... He or he or she doesn't have sensory desire. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> no way! No way! <laughs> and then, but they also want to share for cravings and clinging, right? I mean, um, for for lay devotees, from your cravings, right? You actually can train and practice yourself to have unconditioned love. You know, for me, oh, I you're, still you're love, right. Yeah. Uh, very happy in both lay and then even if you have practice you will find yourself if you feel very good and very at, at, at peace like this brother he's asking it is not that you married then you you can't have cravings you have cravings you still love the person but it's an unconditioned love and then you you don't see that person as oh i i have sensual pleasure it's more like a companion you know you can share a lot of things with this person and you you Yeah. I find you whether this person do right, do wrong, you just share and then you just practice and then I think you will feel that kind of peace in you. I, I don't know whether this this is Thank my you. Idea. Thank you from being my side. <laughs> 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 so actually I want to say it. I want to say it. Actually I'm actually I don't it's so profound. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I think now I win. <laughs> She, she gave a very good point. 
to left. Actually, for that reason, you know, translation make very, you know, uh, lead to misunderstanding. But here, left, uh, meta also sometimes translated as a left. And craving turn out also translated as a left. Actually, they are totally different. Totally different. So actually, for that reason, um, uh, to differentiate between normal love and metta, we use the word loving kindness. But of course, some uh, uh, native speaker define it. Uh, especially Pandikuna uh, Ratana, he used very beautiful translation, friendliness, friendliness. That means uh, unconditioned love, right? No condition. Whether you, you have a chance for uh, sensual desire, it doesn't matter. You, here, meta me, you just went, I want to say the welfare of a person. You want them to be happy. You want them to be successful. So that is love, a loving kindness of meta. Sometimes we can practice even to those you hate. Of course, in your deep, deep in your mind, you hate them. But sometimes, if you want the welfare and happiness of that person, that's called metta. You can practice metta in short period, at least short periods. We can practice. appear in a certain period. Trying to prolong, right? Trying to make a uh, longer time, you know? To practice this matter toward those passing. If you can understand. When I was young, uh, we compete each other trying to get first prize. Me and my friends. So at the time, I hate that, that my friend. Actually, we are arriving. <laughs> and of course, we compete I put a lot of effort uh, for my studies. So in the for two or three years later, then I always I'm in my in my tempe the first prize. So he couldn't compete with me. So by that time, so from that time onward, we became close friend, close friends. Peter, can you say then? Riven. So anyway, uh, I think I don't know what, what happened. Then we became very close friend, even up to now. So what I want to say is, uh, we can practice meta in the family. Even though, uh, even though you grow old, there is no desire for sensual pleasure, but you still have a love or loving kindness meta. You want to see him or her to be very happy, to be successful, to have a comfort, right? That is meta, loving kind, of, very beautiful. Um, just one statement. Um, thank you for the profound talk. Yeah. Because it triggered off, you know, some yeah. thoughts in me. So just a statement to that, to the brother there. Uh, who asked about, you know, the sexual desire. Yeah. yeah. So, the one statement I'll say is that... Um, but actually, just for the sake of discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, not say anything about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I realized, uh, by, uh, Bante, but it took me a long time, that meta frees your mind. Beautiful, it is so wonderful. It really frees your mind once you have meta. Because yeah. once you have meta, everything that used to matter in the past, it just melts away. So meta really frees your mind. But it's very hard to find yeah. the meta, yeah, you're right. especially you're right. in people that you don't like. And you have to keep practicing. This is just my personal experience. Keep if you force it, it will lead to another, uh, another, I want to say, another end. 
Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. I, 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 I would force it. Mm. And I know that I seeded a lot of bad karma in the past because a lot mm. of the um, um, akusala mental factors come in because there's up and there's down. Yeah. But then if you keep on practicing, you come to a point, you know, yeah. where you don't go up and down. You don't stable and it's just metta and compassion. That is all. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, in many sodas, many soda, uh, metta is used, the liberation of the mind, chaita vimodi. Liberation of the mind, the mind liberated from iwi, pyapara. Because of iwi, we have a lot of problems. Hmm? So if you have metta, your mind liberated from Cheta we modi. Okay, and then um, we just finished the definition of clinging. So next week we learn. We learn uh, clinging, different type of clinging. Thank you. Yo wa ra dam ba wa ro ma nu je su sa kya mo ni pa ka wa ka ta ke cho pa ra ka to pa la vi di ya sa man ki Tan su ka tan sa ra na ta mu pe mi A ka So kan Dhamma ma sang ka ta ma pa ti ku lan Marura mi man pa ku nan su vi pa ta Dhamma mi man sa ra na ta mu pe mi Yata cha te na ma ha pa la ma hu Chattu su su si su puri sa yu ge su Atta cha po ka la dhamma da sa te sa mu pe mi Satu 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 Thank you everyone